Hello friends, in this video, I am going to give you introduction to Delta Lake, what is Delta Lake and what are the features of Delta Lake and why we are going to use Delta Lake. So let's start with agenda. So in this continuous sessions, I am going to give you introduction to Delta Lake, why Delta Lake, key features, what are the major key features if you are going to use Delta Lake, what are the features we will get, how to use a Delta Lake in Databricks. Delta Lake examples like all uh, creating a table, DML operations, versioning and other things. So how to use DML operations in Delta Lake Then time travel data, how to use this, uh, utilize this feature time travel data like versioning concept. Then uh, how to use uh, SD type 2 in uh, Delta Lake, then uh, partitions, how to create a partitions, how to manage partitions. So finally performance tuning. So in this continuous sessions, I will give you all this information. What is Delta Lake, why Delta Lake, major features, examples, other things. Let's start with why Delta Lake. So now most of the clients, most of the projects, most of the data is moving to on-premises to cloud. So on multiple systems are integrated in cloud in data lakes. So everyone knows who are working already in big data, they will be knowing already what is the data lake, how we are storing data in data lake. So we have already a huge features in big data with the data lakes, but still we are missing some of the major features in data lakes. The major missing features are challenges in implementing implementation of data lakes is missing asset properties. That's called so parallelly multiple users, multiple jobs or multiple applications want to do insert, update, delete. It's not possible in data lakes. So that's one one major thing is missing that's called inserts, upserts, deletes, everything. Lack of schema enforcement. Lack of schema enforcement means so whenever source data, whenever you are getting source data, schema is getting changed, is new column is added, new data be changed. So you job should support this, your data lake should support this to update this latest information. So this is not possible in current uh, data lakes then lack of consistency and lack of data quality in major big data drawback is data quality okay so we don't have a constraints so now delta lake is providing it as of now only two constraints is providing one is not null and check constraint as well as consistency okay so the whatever we are managing huge data with a large number of small files so whenever you are reading so with multiple folders like hierarchical folders, partitions, so it is very difficult to fetch the data. Like if you are looking small piece of data also, it will go to any number of small files. So obviously it will impact the performance. So this is the major drawbacks. So when we are managing data lakes and another thing is corrupted data due to frequent job failures. So we already, we like if you are already working in big data, you will be knowing all this multiple times of frequent jobs failures because of maybe storage issues or maybe whatever we are doing DML operations multiple times multiple users mul parallel multiple applications are parallel updating lack of cardinality issue or maybe corrupted data or so different scenarios we are already facing in big data so because of this corrupted data is still we are not able to roll back corrupted data if job is fail in between that how to roll back those failed job data so it's very difficult in data lakes. Okay, so this is the major challenges we are facing in data lakes. So in data lake, these are the things we are facing. So Delta Lake will give you all these features. So it will support all this asset transactions, schema enforcement, data quality, like consistency. And uh, if you have a large number of small files, just reduce those small files. So it will give a good performance when you are reading as well as when you are doing DML operations. Then frequent job failures you can avoid. So this is the thing why we are going Delta Lake. Okay, then what is Delta Lake? So we understand we are facing some issues with the Data Lake. Then what is Delta Lake? So Delta Lake is a open source storage layer that brings acid transactions to Apache Spark and Big Data workloads on Data Lakes. So majorly it's a Spark based. Okay, so whenever you are storing data in Data Lakes, so it will support asset transactions, schema enforcement, so other things. That's a major Delta Lake feature. So in Databricks, if you are using Databricks, so whenever you are creating a table, 
whatever you are storing data, the file system and the tables, everything will manage. So Delta Lake will manage this through Spark API, through Spark API. So Delta Lake is a open source storage layer that brings as a transaction to Spark and big data workloads on Data Lakes. That. So Delta Lake provides as a transactions on Spark and scalable metadata handling. Another major issue in uh, big data projects, whenever you are storing data in the data lakes, metadata management. So metadata management is a huge issue because of frequently changing source data, source fields, data types, as well as st structured, semi-structured, unstructured data. So obviously we will face more issues on metadata management. So you can handle very easily if you use Delta Lake. So it will support very like a separate it will store as a JSON files whatever you are doing metadata everything then data lake runs top of existing data lake okay and is fully compatible with Apache Spark API so we will use Apache Spark API to work on this delta lake features so delta lake supports packet format currently it is supporting only packet format schema enforcement trying travel and upsets and deletes so it is supporting all these features schema enforcement Pocket format we can store, then time travel data. So major thing, whenever, uh, like last month, one month, whatever transaction is happened, updates are inserted. So if you want to roll back those data, okay, you can roll back using version numbers. That's called time travel data. So it will support upsets and insert, like uh, insert, delete, update, merge into. So this all statement it will support. And so major features. So data like major features is, it's an open source, storage format that brings asset transaction to Apache Spark and Big Data Workloads. Format, so currently it is supporting Apache, sorry, pocket format, uh, where like if you are using uh, Azure, blob storage or ADLS1 or ADLS Gen2 or Gen1, so anywhere you can store. It will support asset transactions, so ensure the data integrity and read consistency with the complex and correct data pipelines. Why? Because whenever you are doing multiple jobs, multiple users are updating or inserting, so it will take the data integrity and read consistency okay then schema enforcement and evolution so the major issue is when your uh, source system side data the schema is getting changed so it will do schema enforcement so we have option called uh, merge schema so it will take care about all schema related like metadata related issues then audit history so history of all operations that happen in the table so we can find all the information insert update uh, whatever transactions is happened on the table, we can find audit history, time travel. So whatever do you, we are doing a major DML operations on table, so we can find a complete time travel. So we can revert back if you need based on version number. Then deletes and upsets. So it will support insert, delete, update, merge into these all the operations using Spark API. Then scalable metadata management. So able to handle millions of files or scaling the metadata operations with Spark. So major features here dml operations and metadata management so that i can say then unified batch and streaming source and sync so whenever you are processing batch process or streaming process both it will support for interactive queries batch job tables as well as streaming jobs so both as a sync as a source so it will support both sync means target source is source also you can say that so this is the major features we will get if we use delta like so next session I will give you, I will start with one, how to create a table, then how to use the Delta Lake features. Okay, we will cover all these things. So before that, just we need to understand the process for data process flow. So you have a different source systems, you are processing data and finally you are giving to reporting team. So where data will be stored, the data will be stored in any of the data lake, existing data lake, maybe Hadoop HDFS or ADLS, blob storage or amazon s3 buckets so anywhere you can store the data will be finally stored in your existing data lakes only but uh, before storing whenever you are processing this the three stages we will process that's called ingestion layer that's a bronze then refined layer tables that's called silver and feature aggregated data store that's called gold layer so in this ingestion layer whatever you have raw data that will will store first so once we will we'll get the raw data, then we will filter all junk data and we will do other transformations, everything. Final refined data will be stored in the refined tables that call silver layer. 
After that, aggregation for based on reporting layer requirement, we'll do all aggregations and everything. Finally, we'll store into gold layer. But data will be up storing into background will be over any of the data lake. But the delta lake will be using all these tables, uh, inserts, updates, and everything will be managed. And metadata also, metadata also will be managed. So this is the overall, you can say, data flow architecture. What how delta lake will looks in real? Okay, how delta lakes looks? So it's like a completely table management. So let's let's look at uh, one example how to create a table syntax so other things in next session so thank you for watching my videos please subscribe my channel to get more videos and updates on my channel thank you very much